What's up you guys, my name is Mark and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be reviewing and discussing the Hey Gears Reflex RS Turbo Resin 3D Printer as well as their Ultracraft curing and washing machines. So let's not waste any more time and get right to the video. Hey Gears was started in 2015 and prides itself on its high quality resin printers and its proprietary ecosystem including their own in-house resin products and software. Now this can be really beneficial for those looking for an easy integratable system but it also has its downsides which we'll discuss later. Upon unboxing the printer is pretty much already assembled. The only thing to do is plug in the power cord and install the resin tank and build platform. The printer also came with a spatula and scraper for removing parts after printing. The build platform is installed by sliding it onto the printer's Z-axis arm and locking it into place with the lever. Hey Gears was kind enough to send me an upgraded resin tank that includes a heating module in the bottom to keep the resin at a constant temperature when printing. I'm going to install this tank in lieu of the standard tank provided with the printer. A few screws must be removed and replaced to install the heating module. There's a small rubber stopper that needs to be removed on the back of the printer to allow the power cord for the heater to make its way into the machine. A small cable is used to connect the printer to the heating module. The tray is simply secured into place using the thumb screws on either side of the tank. After that, the printer is pretty much set up. It really is that simple. Another nice thing is that this printer is designed for a streamlined user experience. This is made possible through Hey Gear's proprietary resin ecosystem ensuring print quality and equipment stability. While this does create a closed ecosystem, it simplifies the printing process by providing pre-calibrated settings for each resin type, making it extremely easy for users totally new to the resin printing process. The Reflex RS Turbo utilizes Blueprint, a cloud-based slicing software that streamlines the printing process with one-click slicing, automatic model repair, and intelligent support generation. This is a game changer for hobbyists and professionals that struggle with 3D slicers. Slicing programs can be extremely overwhelming, but having automated presets based on your resin and printer type can simplify the process immensely. The pre-processing system isn't the only thing that this printer has to offer. It has an 8K Amber LCD screen, which is an upgrade from the Reflex RS's monochrome screen. The Amber screen maintains constant light intensity over time, achieving clearer, sharper results with no visible layer lines. The printer's Z-axis module ensures high repeatability with layer positioning errors no more than 2 micrometers and layer heights as low as 0.03 millimeters. The Reflex RS Turbo can achieve average printing speeds of 4.5 seconds per layer through the use of Hey Gear's Dynamic Motion Algorithm 3.0. This analyzes each layer's complexity in real time, adjusting motion parameters to increase print speed by up to 33% without compromising quality. When the printer is turned on, orange accent lights illuminate the inside. Upon powering up, the first thing it asks me to do is connect to my Wi-Fi network. The device then requests I download Blueprint from the Hey Gears website, which I'll show you how to do a little bit later in this video. The rest of the prompts on the screen include peeling off screen protectors, connecting the resin tank, and installing the build platform, all of which I've already done. The last prompt is a leveling test. This printer is equipped with automatic leveling and the whole process takes about two minutes. Since this is the first time operating, there was a failure during automatic leveling and some manual adjustment needs to be done. This includes following the prompts on the screen and using an Allen wrench to tighten and loosen two screws on the platform mount. Overall, really easy and after that, the automatic leveling sequence passed without any issues. Once the initial setup is complete, this menu is displayed on the screen. There is practically zero lag in the screen controls, which I found to be a big downside in some of the other touchscreen 3D printers I've used. I head to the settings and check for updates, of which there is one, so I download and execute it. After that, we're ready to start printing. In addition to the printer and some of the items for post-processing, Hey Gears also sent me three different types of resin. The first is standard PAS-10 modeling resin. This resin is tailored for high-precision 3D printing applications and is particularly well-suited for producing detailed miniatures, prototypes, and small batch products where surface quality and dimensional accuracy are essential. The second is high-precision PAP-10 resin. This resin is engineered for producing minifigures and finely detailed structures. The last is a flexible PVC-like PAP-10 PAF-10 resin. It has excellent high breakage resistance and anti-aging properties. My plan is to test the printer's speed and precision by printing a few miniature models with each type of resin. The first model that I'm going to print is Minas Tirith, which is the capital city of Gondor from Lord of the Rings. I downloaded this model for free from my mini factory and we'll have a link in the description below. 
I think this will be the easiest to print of all three models and should require very little support structure. I'll be using the standard modeling PAS10 resin and will do all the pre-processing in Blueprint. You can easily download the Blueprint software by going to the Software and Cloud tab on the Hagears website. Once downloaded, I open the program, select my server location, and create an account. After logging in, my printer is added by clicking on Bind New Device and typing in the binding code displayed on the screen of the machine. The curing and washing devices are bound by using the Blueprint Go app and following the instructions on the screen of each machine. After being added, all devices are displayed on the home screen. The printer shows up on Blueprint as the Reflex RS because at the time of filming this video, the RS Turbo had not officially launched yet. Rest assured, even if it shows Reflex RS, I am indeed working with the RS Turbo. To slice a file for printing, click on the slicer button in the left corner of the screen. This opens a workspace where a new project can be created. When new project is selected, a startup menu appears where the printer model, add-ons, application, resin material, and layer thickness are specified. All this information is fed into the software's algorithm, which helps the program intelligently configure your model based on the inputs. After creation of the project, I upload the Minus Tirith file by going to the import button in the left corner of the screen. The model is a bit bigger than what I'm looking for and doesn't quite fit on the print bed, so I changed the scale to 50% of the original size. The most fascinating feature of Blueprint is the one-click slice button. Once the model is loaded in the slicer, all that's left to do is click the button and Blueprint automatically repairs, orients, supports, configures, and slices the model according to your printer, resin type, and layer thickness. This is by far the coolest feature I have ever seen in a slicing software. You essentially don't have to learn a new program or make guesses on how to orient files and where to place supports. The big downside to this is that it only works with Hagear's printers and resins, meaning if you want to use a different brand of resin, you're kind of out of luck. For me, this is a huge upside because I don't have to take the time to learn anything new. I want things to be as easy as possible and I'd be willing to pay a premium to get it. Features like this are especially fantastic for hobbyists who batch print or businesses that sell lots of miniatures online. Now, whatever you think of this, it really does come down to personal preference, but I love it. With the literal push of a button, Blueprint knows exactly what I need and I save so much time not having to worry about dialing in my settings. After slicing is complete, the model appears in my sliced files dashboard where it shows the file details, approximate print time, and resin consumption. From here, I can save it to a USB drive or send it directly to my printer from my computer via Wi-Fi. The bottle of PAS10 resin is opened and the tray is filled to the middle line on the tank. This printer has an auto refill mechanism for its resin tank, but it's only compatible with certain bottles offered on the Hagears website. I won't be using this feature for this print because the PAS10 resin bottle is not compatible with the refill apparatus. I hope Hagears changes this in the future because the PAS10 resin is the cheapest and probably most widely used. Selling it in a compatible bottle to auto refill the tank just seems like a no brainer. Since the printer is prepped and ready, the file is sent right from my computer. The print time is about 6 hours and consumes roughly 100 grams of resin. After printing is complete, the excess resin is wiped from the platform using the spatula. The model is removed from the build plate using the utility knife supplied with the printer. The supports are also removed before putting the part into the wash. If the supports aren't removed before curing, they become incredibly difficult to take off and you can damage your model. Please remember to always wear gloves when handling uncured resin prints. Once supports are removed, the part is placed into one of the wash containers and filled with 99% isopropyl alcohol until it covers about three quarters of the model. The wash box is placed on the wash unit and the knob is rotated to select the wash button where the speed and time are specified. Upon clicking start, the machine's platform will gyrate, shaking the wash box and thoroughly rinsing the uncured resin model inside. When the process is complete, the full wash box is placed on the empty one. The cleaning agent valve is rotated to the on position and the air in switch is pressed in. The isopropyl alcohol flows freely from one box to the other and the clean model can be removed. After rinsing completely, it's transferred to the curing machine. Curing involves exposing the model to UV light, fully solidifying the resin, achieving higher strength and durability. The curing machine is connected to the Wi-Fi and the model is placed on the turntable inside the machine. The knob is rotated to the curing button and the resin type is selected before pressing start. Do not open the door while the model is curing and do not look directly into the device if there is still residual light when removing the part. After about 5 minutes in the machine, the part is fully cured and can be handled without gloves. 
I also printed the same figurine on my Ender 3 S1 at a 0.12 millimeter layer height using a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. The difference in surface finish and detail quality is astounding. The layer lines are practically invisible on the resin, but can clearly be identified on the PLA print. Although resin printing requires the extra steps of washing and curing, it's going to save me so much time when post-processing in the future. So after making my first print, I'm super impressed. But I want to see what this printer can do using the other two types of resin that Hay Gears provided me. The second item I'm going to print is this Darth Vader statue I downloaded from Cults 3D. I'll be printing this using the PAP10 resin, which is especially good for models requiring precise detailing. The part is loaded and sliced in the same manner as the Lord of the Rings model. After slicing with the click of a button, it is sent to the printer directly from my computer. Since this model has quite a bit more detail and support, it prints in about 10 hours. After printing, the figure is placed into the wash machine to remove the excess resin and then moved to the curing machine where the resin is reinforced and hardened. Once finished, the model is removed from the curing machine and I can see the exquisite details. I'm blown away with the quality and precision. The model is so detailed that if I didn't know it was 3D printed, I think it was injection molded. The last one to test is the PAF10, which is the flexible PVC-like resin. I'll be printing this dragon from Game of Thrones using this material. I scaled down the model and slice it in the same way as the first two. The dragon prints in seven hours and is put through the same washing and curing process. The result is of similar quality, but with increased flexibility. I can see how resin like this could be perfect for making miniatures for games such as Dungeons and Dragons, where the pieces go through a lot of continual use. Okay, now that I've used all three resins and gone through all the printer's features, what do I think? Well, I think it's probably the easiest printer I've ever used and the print quality is the best I've ever seen. I love this printer and if you can afford it, I absolutely recommend getting one. However, I do want to make a few points here. A printer like this is not meant to replace an FDM printer. It's meant to complement it. I also love my Creality printers and they are fantastic for making larger cosplay items, but when it comes to small parts with lots of detail, the resin printer blows them out of the water. The build volume of the resin printer is significantly smaller than my Ender 5 Plus, so I don't foresee myself trying to print large cosplay masks using the RS Turbo. But when parts do fit or I have pieces that require extreme detail or are hard to sand, I'll for sure be using it. It's all about balance, and I think using a combination of both resin and FDM printers produce the best results. Once again, just my take. If you would like to purchase a Hay Gears resin printer, I'll have an affiliate link in the description below with a coupon for $50 off. With that guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and consider subscribing for more content. I'll see you next time and stay classy.